Probably about uh, 25 minutes ago, we were at 59 degrees and 55 minutes of south latitude. Every turn of the propeller gets you closer to civilization and normalcy. Um, hoping you're able to take these nuggets of Antarctica with you for, for your soul going forward. But biologically, we're still in Antarctica. The seawater temperature under the hull right now is a, a cool 2.6 degrees Celsius. And until that shoots up to about six or seven degrees Celsius, then biologically we're still in Antarctica, south of the polar front. Eventually, we'll get to the mouth of the Beagle Channel. Tierra del Fuego is off. We'll be off our starboard side. Let's be turning to the channel. Keep performing. I am. I I'm never stop. I never stop. The show must go on. Ship tours will visit the engine room and the control room down in the bowels of the ship and let you see what all the gizmos look like down there. Ask a few questions. Tell you a little bit more about the specifics of the ship. Uh, we'll go to the mud room and we'll talk about the science that the ship was built to perform did perform, still currently performs, and then we'll go up to the bridge and we'll talk about all the gizmos on the bridge and, and what exactly everything does and how it works. Start with uh, a little bit about the ship itself. It was built in Rama, Finland in 1989, 
and it is the twin sister ship of the academic Yaffe. In fact, there are four in the fleet. Uh, one is larger, uh, twin prop, larger beam, slightly uh, longer in length, and then one that's smaller, single screw, uh, narrower beam, and uh, smaller ship. And they are owned by the Shearshaw Institute of Oceanography in Kaliningrad, which is a little sub-faction of Russia uh, down below, uh, or just above Gdansk, Poland. And so once upon a time, as Danny alluded to, the ships were involved with science, but quite honestly, there's no time left for them to participate in science any longer. And that is because our seasons have grown so much. Our first season in 2009, we had two 10-day trips, a month off and an 18-day trip, and we had no Arctic program. Our Antarctic season now begins in mid-October, will conclude on March 31st, and our uh, Arctic season begins in May 25th-ish, and we'll conclude September 30th. And quite honestly, it's everything the ship can do to get from pole to pole while stopping and being provisioned and serviced. The ship are uh, serviced annually and then a major overhaul and uh, refurbishment every five years of going to dry dock. So the money that is generated through tourism essentially is fed back into the other two ships. So the money is, the intent is still there. It's just how it's allocated between the ships. So you've probably read on Wikipedia that these are spy ships and we're quite happy to back you up on whatever far-fetched tale you want to tell your friends when you get back to Australia regarding anything on your trip, really. <laughs> Just send us an email and for a small nominal fee, paid in cash, USD, sequential 50s only. I'm happy to tell them whatever you want. You just tell me where to sign. Even the weather was good. Even, yeah, we don't have to worry about that. But, uh, you know, the fact is that, you know, they were spy... They, you know, there's um, rumors floating around their spy ships. That may very well be the case. The fact is the ships are not allowed in American waters, um, but they are in Canadian waters, obviously. And it has largely to do with the fact that the, the ships were involved in underwater acoustics. And that's what this business is here. So there's a moon pool here. It's closed off at the moment, but on, if we were experiencing a little bit of waves, you'd be able to hear the waves sloshing around. That goes straight through the hull of the ship. Uh, this thingamabob is lowered down. This is the receiver. The Afe holds the transmitter. Uh, between the two ships, you would not know which ship you were on. The configuration of the ships is identical with the exceptional location of the bar, which here is located on deck six, aft, 270 degree view. On the Afe, it's located here where cabins 330, 331, 332 are. So deck. huge flywheel and then down and that's what lowers this device into the water. Alternatively, this uh, big spindle can be rotated over the moon pool and this um, plastic tubey type thing is a hydrophone. So it's just another means of uh, list underwater receiving and um, acoustic. So at a strata of about a thousand meters in the water column, um, governed by the temperature and the conductivity of the water above and below that, there's a, a stratum where it's less dense. And so rather than sound scattering endlessly through the water, it becomes trapped in that stratum. And so the story goes, the Yafe sent out a signal that the Vavilov received some 4,500 kilometers away. And so that's some of it. In addition to that, there is a Doppler uh, sonar that's permanently fixed to the hull of the ship. Um, you've all seen upon entering the um, uh, bridge, just to the immediate left of the uh, helm, and I'll point it out again, you've seen that software program, and that is a, we're mapping the sea floor on every transit of the Drake and everywhere in between, although the, within 200 nautical miles of the Falklands and 200 nautical miles of South Georgia, we cannot conduct that business. But you've seen Vlad, Vlad, uh, Vadim walking around the ship, you probably didn't know who he was, um, but he's the scientist that's on board uh, as a resident, and he's here to monitor the lead equipment and just make sure everything's tickety-boo. And in addition to that, we currently have an Argentine observer on board who's here really just to stare blankly at Vadim and watch him stare blankly at computer screen. So everyone has their part and that's it. No one ever gets that. Oh, look, look. Yeah, how is so, uh, if for whatever reason you were to lose control of steering of the ship up on the bridge, um, they, through a valve system, it's still hydraulic, 
it can redirect uh, pressurized hydraulics uh, back here to this. If you still have power, you can use this and take commands from the bridge uh, via electricity. If you lose power, this is straight off the set from Hogan's Heroes. I don't know if you did that in Australia. You crank it, you can speak with the